Hello everyone, welcome to another Java for Testers tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about exception handling in Java and how you can use try catch finally in Java to handle any exceptions that occur. So prior to getting into the details of exception handling, I'll first explain the scenarios or very common scenarios in the Selenium automation that uh, will require you to basically implement exception handling using try catch. So for example, you are trying to um, automate a web application and you are trying to read some data from the particular file that you want that you uh, think that it's available at that particular location, but that file itself is not available in that particular location. And in that particular case, you will get an exception. So this is, you know, very common scenario. You are trying to read a file or you, you are trying to read data from a particular file and the file doesn't exist. Or you are trying to write the data in a particular file uh, that should be at a particular location, but that file itself is not there. So these are some of the scenarios. So then the second scenario could be you are uh, trying to find certain web element on the page and the web element is not available and your script basically you know, um, is not able to find the web element and it um, fails at that particular point. Uh, the Another scenario could be the network issues, uh, which you don't have control on or uh, the, the operating system or the memory issues. So these are very common scenarios where you might get exceptions or the errors in your program. And Java uh, allows you to handle all these using try catch finally statements and we'll understand how you can utilize try catch finally to handle all these exceptions. So exceptions can be in many forms, many scenarios. There will be errors and ex exceptions. There could be possibility that within the code you when you are writing the code, the code itself is not, you know, um, it, it is trying to validate uh, the scenario which is not actually valid, which we'll see in the current examples so for example division by zero so division by zero is not valid right so in that particular case you will get an exception so uh, but when you write the particular java program and if you say divide by zero you won't get any error unless until you run the particular program so these are some of the scenarios wherein when where we will use the exception handling so let me create a package and i'll say Com dot rcv and I'll say try catch. All right, so here I'll create a new class and I'll name it as um, try catch demo. Let me include the main method and finish it. Now in this particular class, say for example, I define a variable of type int and assign the value as 10 and then I try to divide it by zero. So we know that division by zero is not allowed. And after this particular statement, let me print another statement. I'll say after division, all right. And let me execute this particular program. So if I run this, you will see that an exception has occurred, right? So exception in thread main, and this is an arithmetic exception division by zero message has been displayed right and you can see that as soon as the exception occurred this statement hasn't been printed right so anything or any code that is after the exception won't get printed or won't get executed so let me include another print statement and say it as before before division right and then we'll see that before division gets printed and after division is not getting printed because of the exception so the program terminates as soon as you will get an error or ex exception in your java program and that's why we need to handle these exception say for example there was an exception but you still want your script or test script to basically execute further steps even though there was uh, there was some test case which failed due to exception, either uh, memory uh, problem or it, that for that particular test case, the 
file was not found, the test file or the data file was not found. So in those sort of scenarios, you will use uh, where you know that this particular test case might fail because of certain condition. You can use it in the try catch finally block and handle the exception. So now, for example, to handle exception, we'll use the try catch finally. And let's understand try first. So for example, you know that this particular piece of code is uh, the code that might give an exception or that uh, that might have the exception so you just simply say try and within the try block i'll use or i'll include the code that is you know that might give me some error right and then after try block we'll say catch so catch is another keyword and we'll catch the exception so basically what we'll do is in the catch you just use the parenthesis and you use the parent class so throwable throwable is the parent class which catches the exception so if i say catch throwable t which is the object and in the uh, you know curly braces let me format it uh, then what this does is if there is any exception so throwable if i'll show you if you go to the java docs this throwable is the class which has the subclasses error and exception so all any sort of error that will happen if you go to this error link and the exception so different exceptions or the error so error can be of you know assertion error or you know uh, these these are some of the direct known subclasses that have implemented this error class but these most common errors or abnormal conditions will be handled by this error class and the exception class will handle all the exception this is the subclass of throwable parent class so if you include the throwable parent class then it will handle both error if error occurs or exception occurs it will be able to capture or catch both so you don't have to worry about the um, error or exception separately so now will it will catch the exception and say for example now there are certain methods as well so if you go to this throwable class if you scroll down you will see it has a lot of methods that are supported so you if you want to know the cause of that particular exception you can use the method get cause you can get the message you can get the stack trace right so whatever whatever stack trace is coming here we can get that as well so if i'll simply say um let me format the code and if i'll say t dot get message it will print the message okay so let me let me print it out so i'll do the sysout statement and i'll print the message that has been displayed because of this particular error and then another statement i'll say t dot get uh, cause and so it will give me the cause of the error and then i'll say t dot get stack trace so this will print the stack trace of the error right so now we have surrounded our code that might fail in the try block and then in the catch block we are catching in case there is an, any exception we are catching that exception and then getting the message and the cause of that exception and then there is a statement after the catch block after division now let's see when we implement this try catch strategy in our pro program let me save this and after implementing this try catch mechanism that the program executes and this statement which is after division gets executed so if i run this you will see before division got printed then the error has been caught so basically the message why the error happened so division by zero cause is not known so it has printed null and then it has caught that exception and also progressed further and has printed after division right so let me it has it hasn't printed the stack trace so i think it has it is t dot print let me see t dot print or uh, print stack trace sorry 
So this is not get stack trace. So if I say get stack trace method, I have to use the sysout to actually print it on the console. Let me show you. Let me comment this out and run again. So you can see here the get stack trace gives me this information. And if we go to the documentation here, get stack trace, what it does is it provides the programmatic access to the stack trace information printed by print stack trace. Okay. So to print the stack trace, we have to use t dot print stack trace. Okay. So whatever object you have defined here, so that and then dot you can access the method. Um, if I run this now, it will print that stack trace, right? So the stack trace has also been printed. And after that, after division has been executed as well. So that's the advantage of using try catch block. Because if there is any error, or you suspect that the line of code that you're writing might end up into an exception, or uh, b there might be some, you know, other issues that happen, because I'm reading an external file or trying to write in an external file, it's better to surround that piece of code into try catch block as it will ensure that if the exception or error occurs, your script still continues to execute further steps that are mentioned in your script. Now, the third important thing here with the try catch is you have the try keyword. We have seen the catch keyword and then there is another keyword finally. So try catch finally. And when you use finally keyword, what this does is say, for example, you are trying something and that ends up in exception catch will catch that exception and then whatever code you have written in finally block will always get executed right so this is say for example i write a sys out statement in the finally block so this is finally block right so even if the exception occurs or doesn't occur this finally block will always get executed so in case the exception occurs exception will be caught in the catch block and then finally will be executed. If the try block doesn't end up in any, ex any exception, still it will come to the final block and eg execute the statements that are mentioned in the finally block. So that's the advantage of having the finally block. So let me execute this and show you that finally block is getting executed. So you'll see this is final block that got executed even though there was an exception right now if say for example there is no exception let me divide it by two this time so there won't be any exception and then finally block will still get executed right so before division then the division there wasn't any exception and then this fine this is finally block got executed so the control came here it got executed that and then after division got printed right so that's all about the try catch finally now in if we talk about the real scenario of try catch finally where you will use it in your test cases say for example in all your test cases most of the time what you do is you do the data setup and for the data setup you might be getting data from the external file from database you will be reading the uh, information uh, and then using that particular data to do the data setup in the application once your data has been set up then you execute your test cases uh, once the execution has completed you clean up the data so that next time you can reuse the same data or uh, the data that you create using the automation script doesn't you know um, become unmanageable in your actual testing application so in these sort of scenarios or in most of the cases you will be using the try catch finally block say for example the data cleanup part you can put it in in the finally block so even if um, you know data setup has been done and in case the data setup wasn't being uh, done properly in that particular case then finally block has the cleanup or the tear down steps which will go ahead and clean up the data from your application so data setup you can put in the try block and then in case there is an, uh, there is an exception it will be caught in the catch block and still the data cleanup will happen if you put the cleanup steps in the final block even uh, if the exception occurred or even if the exception didn't occur it will still come to the finally block as we have seen here and clean up the data 
So this is the real scenario which we'll actually understand when we go through the uh, Selenium framework tutorials, uh, which, which I'll be starting after this Java tutorial series. So I'll be covering all the Selenium framework concept and how you can design the framework and actually use Selenium web driver with Java in any of your uh, organization's project. So that's all for this tutorial of exception handling using try catch finally in Java. Hope you like the tutorial. Please do share and subscribe and thank you for watching.